Hey guys, this is Mark here from PFT and today we are going to be doing a bit of an overview of the Microsoft Xbox One. Now recently, Patrick, who you may know from the YouTube channel The Podrig and from over on our website, got his hands on the new Xbox One. Now what I was going to do was simply what I do with all products with the usual unboxing and overview and then the review video. But the Xbox One is an extremely popular console and many channels have covered unboxing videos out there before and unlike reviews, unboxing videos are all very very similar, simply showing you what is in the box. So I thought I'd give you something a little different and just give you my first impressions of this new console. So I did still film the unboxing and I will put that footage throughout this video, um, but mainly I'm just going to be speaking about my thoughts picking it up for the first time. I literally got to play around with it for about 5 minutes, so just um, if it interests you, please watch this. Now one thing I would like to point out is I have absolutely no script here. Um, usually I make some bullet points or something, but this is completely off the top of my head, um, just my pure, um, unadulterated, if you would like, um, impressions. So forgive me if I say anything that is um, a bit stupid or doesn't make sense, but um, I'm just going to kind of be rambling here. Now, as for the packaging, as with most high-end products, it was very impressive, and this is something that um, I really like to see in a product, as it is your first impressions. You do, of course, want high-quality packaging, as you don't want the product inside to be damaged. Now, um, inside, first of all, you have your cables and things like that. Now, the cables, it is handy that they include all the necessary cables, and um, these cables should be long enough. They are rather big and bulky cables, and from my, um, my first look, the power brick on it was absolutely huge. Now, considering the size of the Xbox One itself, um, I'm very, very um, kind of surprised and a bit annoyed that they didn't have an internal power brick. But um, really, this is probably just going to be sitting behind your TV and isn't going to be bothering you too much. But um, as I said, it is a bit annoying the size of that power brick. Now the power brick um, and the Xbox and the Kinect and all that all follow the same design kind of language. They all have very similar designs and um, very iconic designs that look really, really nice and means that you can tell that it is the Xbox One as soon as you look at it. Now as for the Kinect, it does of course have much better functionality than the original Kinect and it simply performs better. It's better at tracking, better at voice commands and has more functionality. As for the size of it, again, similar to the power brick, it is oddly big. Um, the original Kinect was very small and a very compact, impressive package. Now, clearly here, Microsoft have gone for the functionality side, looks of it, and the form factor of it, as this will be a big, bulky object, most likely on the top of your monitor. And it is a bit unsightly to look at, in my personal opinion, but again, this is not really something that matters too much. Now the features of Kinect I'm extremely impressed with. The voice commands are very very handy and some of the features like snapping um, and some of the other voice commands um, are extremely handy. Just the fact that you can say Xbox on and it turns on is truly amazing to me. Um, I know it's not even that complicated a technology to integrate in the system but um, in the end of the day it makes the end user experience much much better. Getting on to the Xbox itself, again following my trend of complaints, it is very very big. Now comparing it to the PlayStation 4, it is much bigger, um, much bulkier and much heavier. So if that's an issue to you, if you don't have much space on your desk, or if you're planning on transporting it around a lot, then this will of course be a problem for you, but most likely this is something that you can work around. Now something that surprised me after seeing it was how light it was. Now, for a console this size, you would expect it to have a fair bit of weight, similar to the weight of a computer or something like that. But this actually almost felt a bit hollow. Um, you could easily pick it up with one hand and it really didn't seem to have much weight to it. Again, something that I just found a bit odd. It was just an observation, but um, really, that doesn't really affect your usage of this console. So, as I said, I'm a bit disappointed about the size of it. I really do like the design of it. I think it looks sleek. Personally, I prefer the design of the PlayStation 4, but um, the gaming experience is the real thing that matters. Personally, that is what I would fully base my decision on, no matter how big the console is. Um, obviously, if it's too big, then that's out of the question, but um, when we're speaking in these kind of differences, I think the end gaming experience is the only really 
reason you should choose between the consoles and I am very very impressed with the end game experience here. Now I know there will most likely be tons of people out there that prefer PC and yes it is true you can get higher frame rates and higher resolutions but at the end of the day I personally just much prefer the console gaming experience. Don't get me wrong I still like playing games on PC and I do quite regularly but just the game's console experience just seems to be better as they are fully designed for gaming. Whereas computers aren't really designed for gaming, they can do gaming, but that is not the main aim of the system. I also love playing with a controller and in my opinion the Xbox has really got this controller right. Personally it's not quite as nice as the 360 controller but um, apart from that it is probably the best controller on the market. It is very premium feeling and um, it has a nice size to it. The only problem I had which wasn't really a problem it was just something I noticed was that the thumbsticks were oddly small though I'm sure this is something you would get used to over time. We also picked up the stereo adapter which allows you to plug headphones or speakers into the bottom of your controller which is a very handy feature so that you don't have to run long cables across. You can pretty much have them wireless from the console. Now the controller will work very well with games as most games are of course designed for consoles. Games like Call of Duty and FIFA etc um, etc et will work very smoothly on these consoles maybe not the best resolutions or even the best frame rates but they should run well and um, be a very very enjoyable experience now that is pretty much all that I got um, out of this short time I had with the Xbox now we will most likely be doing the full review as scheduled so please subscribe to my channel so that you will see that as soon as it comes out we also have a ton more videos coming up in the pipeline so another reason to subscribe if you like this video and you agreed with anything I said why not give it a like share and subscribe to my channel for more content if you disliked this video, why not give it a dislike, but also leave a comment below telling me why you disliked it, and we can start a friendly discussion in the comment section with your opinions on the new Xbox One. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comment section below, or email me at the address in the description. Thank you very much for watching, see ya.